In the last video, we worked on authentication. We'll finish this up in this video when we add logout. And thereafter, we'll start working on the events and make sure that we can create events by, in this video, adding a modal which we'll use to hold the form for adding events. So let's dive in. So in the last videos, we implemented authentication. And if you followed along, you will notice that the styling is a little different. I really wasn't happy with the colors I picked before. Uh, I did this whilst recording. Now I took some time, chose a little bit, uh, some nicer colors here in my opinion. And in the video description below the video, you of course find a link to GitHub repository, um, with this, which is the entire code just with these colors here. So that is one thing here. Uh, this now looks nicer and besides that it's the same as before and hence we can also still log in here for example with our credentials and we are forwarded to this page. Now in this video I want to work on the events, I want to start working on that but I also want to make sure that we can log out because that's a functionality which is missing thus far. And for that in the main navigation I want to add a log out button of course only if we're logged in. So essentially in this block where I also render my bookings link there I'll add a new list item where I want to have my log out button. So I'll add my button element here and say log out on it and uh, React doesn't like this if we have two adjacent um, elements in uh, one block where we must uh, return only one element. So you could wrap this in a div but that would be semantically incorrect in an unordered list. So I will actually use React fragment which is basically an empty React component that we can use as a container. So now we have that button in place. Um, I want to make sure that this button uh, also looks nice and uh, for that we could actually give it the style we have on all the links here. And for that here in the CSS file, I'll add another rule for main navigation items. Any buttons that ha I have in there should have the same styles as my links. Um, I will remove any border I might have there though. Set the font to inherit to use my default font. Um, set the background to transparent and one other thing which is important set the cursor to pointer so that our mouse, uh, mouse cursor updates correctly. Well and then down there I also want to add my rules for buttons where I hover over or my buttons uh, where I, which are active. And of course you could use different styles but I'll just use the same styles as I use on my uh, links. So with that let's uh, quickly sign in again. Now the alignment is an issue here. Um, we can fix that and also the padding here now that I see that or um, the distance we have between the button here and bookings. Let's fix that. Um, I'll add a margin of zero to my anchor tags and to my button and on the or under the list which surrounds it all I'll add align items since I use flexbox off center to align it all on the same level. And now this looks better to me. Okay, perfect. So we have that. Now let's make sure that the logout button also works. And for this on this button, I'll add on click equals. And then here I want to execute a method which, uh, well, does log us out. And we do have our off context here, right? And we do add it such that I can access by context there. Now, on my context, I already prepared this logout method and in app.js where we set up this context, I also set up a logout method already, which should do everything I need to do. So the remaining thing is that in the main navigation, I use this context and call logout there. And I don't call it like this with parentheses, instead I just pass a reference to this logout method to the onClick listener so that when the click occurs, it's executed for me, so to say. So back on this page, let's uh, log in real quick. Here we are and click log out and I'm logged out and I can log in again. And if I should be on bookings while logging out, I'm redirected uh, or I should be redirected. I'm not, I stay on bookings. So that's also something which I wanna change. Let's uh, quickly change that in app.js where we set up all these routes. There I am making sure that I redirect from slash to off and that I redirect from off to events and so on. But if I don't have a token, which means I'm not authenticated, 
Then I'll duplicate this. I want to redirect from bookings uh, to off as well. And of course, we could also write this in a more generic way instead of covering all the cases individually here. So I could say if I'm not authenticated, then I'll not add a from here. Instead, I'll always go to off here. That's the idea. So I always redirect to off. And I'll just move this to the end or at least after events so that this route in case I'm on events has a chance of being handled first because I want to allow access to events. But for all other uh, cases, I want to redirect. So let's try if that works the way it should. If I go to events, I can go there. If I now do log in and I'm on events and I log out, I stay on events. But if I log in again here, and I'm on bookings and log out, I'm redirected to off. So this is working, but this is actually not even what I wanna focus uh, on in this video. Instead, let's work on the events now. Now on the events here, my goal is that we're able to create new events and that we then can see the events we created. For that, let's briefly have a look at our schema again to understand how we create events. We do that by sending a mutation to create event, of course, and we do pass our event input. And event input happens to be an object with a title, a description, a price, and a date. And the date has to be a string here when we submit that. So on our events page, where I currently only show the, uh, the events page, I want to give the user a button that allows the user to create a new event. For this, I'll render a div here. And in that div, let's uh, render a button create event, which if I save that, looks like this. Now that's nice, let's give it some basic styling at least. And uh, for that, I wanna reuse the styling of the buttons I had in my off file. So therefore, let's actually grab these styles here in form actions button and so on. And let's grab all these form controls here and let's outsource these in a global styling file, which, which would be the index CSS file. So that application-wide I can have these styles. And uh, of course I wrap my button here in form actions. Well, I'll simply add an additional selector and make sure that not just buttons and form actions look that way, but also buttons that have the BTN class. And therefore down there, I'll look for BTN hover and BTN active. And this allows me to add that BTN class to this button here. So class name BTN, and by just adding this, well, we have this button, which looks a lot nicer, obviously. Now I wanna center it as well. So in my events uh, page here, I'll give this div here uh, a class of event or events control. And I'll add an events.css file where I want to style that. So events control is my div. There I'll add text align center to align that button in the center. But I'll also give this a border of one pixel solid. And now I'll reuse that color I used for my button, this one, this purple color here. And assign that for the border. Add a padding of let's say um, free rem and a margin of two rem top and bottom and auto left and right, and a width of 30 rem with a max width of 80% here. These are my styles for the events control. For these to apply here, I of course need to import that events.css file. And now as this uh, reloads or refreshes, this is how it looks like. This is my uh, control area, a um, little bit less padding would probably look good. So let's me reduce the reading, uh, padding to one rem. And now here I'll be able to create a new event with that button. Now I'll also add a paragraph above that, share your own events, something like that. Okay, so now we can click that button, but this button, you guessed it, will not do much. For creating an event, we could of course open a new page on our screen here, or what I'll do, we can use a modal. And for this, let's create a new component in a new folder, which I'll name modal. 
And in there I'll have my modal JS file. Now I'll create a new constant modal, which receives props and which uh, should in the end return um, the modal content. We need to import React from React for this. And at the bottom, I'll export this as my default modal, or as the default for this file. Now, in here, let's just render some JSX code that could, uh, well, basically reflect our modal. I'll have a diff, and now in that modal, I wanna have an area for, for the title, I wanna have my content, and I wanna have some action uh, items at the bottom. So in the div here, I'll have a couple of sections, or actually a header um, for my modal title, which of course should be settable from outside. So instead of hard coding it, let's set props title here. I wanna have a content. Now here I can add a section um, with a class name of modal content, like this. And I also wanna have another section with a class name of modal actions. And that will hold my uh, the buttons where I can control this modal. Now you can build a modal in 1000 different ways in all kinds of um, variations. You can build a very flexible co modal where you can pass and configure everything. Here I'll, I'll try to find some, some middle ground I'd say. For the content here in the modal, I want to allow you to pass it in from outside. So here I will render props children, which is basically um, the slot um, solution React offers. So we can pass anything between our modal uh, JSX tags later, and that will be rendered into the modal. For the actions, I'll have exactly two buttons. Um, I'll have a button which allows me to cancel and a button which allows me to confirm. And obviously you could make this more con configurable too. The only thing that I will allow the user to configure is I will accept props here. Um, props can cancel. If that is set, the cancel button will be rendered and props can confirm if that is rendered or if that is set, the confirm button will be rendered. That is uh, my take on that. Now the buttons will receive my button styles. So I'll give this class name equal BTN. And the modal as a whole here will receive a class name of modal. With that, let's add a modal CSS file next to the modal JS here and import modal CSS into the modal JS file. And in modal CSS, I of course want to set the styling for my modal. Now, this styling is something you can, of course, adjust to your requirements and wishes. I'll give my modal a width of, let's say, 40 rem or 50 rem, though it will have a max width of 90% of the available page size. It will have a background of, of white, so a ba white background color, and it'll have a box shadow of 0, 2 pixels, 8 pixels, and then uh, this light, slightly transparent black color here. So that's the modal container, so to say. I also want to position that, and it will have a fixed positioning on the page. And from the top, let's say, it'll have a distance of, let's say, 20 VH. That is a relatively modern um, unit in CSS, and it stands for a viewport height, so 20% of the viewport. Browser support is pretty good right now for this uh, unit, so we can use it here. And from the left, I now have a problem because I don't know the exact width, whether it's 90% or this. So I will actually define uh, two rules here. I will have a width of 90% as a default, and then I'll add a media query for bigger screens because that is meant for smaller sc uh, screens. So a media query where I will check that we have a min width of, let's say, 768 pixels. And if that is the case, I'll overwrite my modal rule and there set the width to, um, yeah, maybe 50 rem. And then up here, I can set left to 5% because I have 90% width. I divide the remaining part between the left and the right side. 
And down there, I know I have a width of 50 rem, so I can calculate um, the left distance by using 100% of the uh, screen size of the of the page width, so to say, minus 50 rem. And that should now be divided by two. Now let's add that modal on our events.js uh, page just so that we can see it. For this, I'll wrap this all in a React fragment and then I'll add the modal by just adding its uh, JSX uh, selector here. So I'll import modal from components, modal, modal, and we could use React portal for that. I'll just implement it like this and add my modal here with my modal content, which again is passed between the opening and closing tags. So this is my modal, looks centered to me. Now on smaller screens, this uh, also looks good. So we can take this, I guess. Now, of course, I'm not done with the modal. Well, first of all, I think it's too big, but that's a minor thing. Uh, I think 30 rem will do. So let's use 30 rem down there as well. But the most important thing is I'm not done with the styling. I have my modal header, I have my modal content. I'll give my modal header here a class of modal header because I wanna select that by a class too. And I'll then add modal header here. Now in the modal header, I'll have a padding of uh, one rem and I'll add a background of my um, purple color, which I used before. So let me grab that purple color. And yes, of course, we could use SAS or anything like that, but I'll just do it with vanilla CSS and set the text color to white in there. And then in my header here, the props title will actually be inside of a H1 tag, let's say. And therefore in the CSS code, I wanna make sure that this H1 tag in the modal header has no extra margin because I already set a padding and I'll set the font size to let's say 1.25 rem. So that's the mod modal header. The modal content will have a padding of one rem and that's it basically. The rest is passed in from outside. And for my modal actions, well, well there I'll set this to display flex and then justify content to flex end to move them to the end of my modal. Now in events, where I use the modal, let's also set some props to configure it correctly. Set the title, for example, to add event. Set the, um, let me quickly have a look at the modal, the can cancel and con can confirm props. So can cancel and can confirm, like this will be treated as true. And if we go back, we therefore see our buttons. Some spacing at the bottom would be nice. So in the modal here, on my actions, I'll also add a padding of one rem around that. Let's save this. Yeah, looks good. Now, obviously our modal also needs a backdrop behind it on the page. And I will create that separately in a new folder, the backdrop, backdrop.js. And that will be a very simple component, this backdrop here. Um, in the end, this is just a div here which I'll give a class name of backdrop and which will now receive some styling. Obviously we need to import React from React here too. And we then need to export um, the backdrop as a default. So that is the backdrop. Let's now add the backdrop CSS file to add the styles for the backdrop. And here for the styles, I wanna have a position of fixed, top should be zero, left should be zero, height should be 100 VH to take the full height of the viewport, width will be 100% and the background color will be a slightly transparent black color, a less transparent than the shadow of the modal though. Now let's use that backdrop on the events page as well. So for this, um, I'll not just import the modal, but also the backdrop from components, backdrop, backdrop. And for now, I'll just drop it in there, my backdrop like this. And if we go back, nothing happens because in 
my backdrop.js file, I of course need to import the backdrop CSS uh, file, otherwise we see no styling. But now we got a backdrop. So this is now the modal, this is how it will look like. Um, I want to open that modal when I click create event, of course. And I will manage this flow here in events.js by adding an on-click listener to this create event button. And I extend my component. So I use the class-based approach and hence I can manage state here. And in that state, we could have a creating property, which initially is false. And we can then add a method, create event handler or start create event handler to be very descriptive of what's happening. And in there, I'll call this set state and set creating to true. And that will be my trigger for showing or hiding that backdrop in the modal. So I will now wrap this here with conditional statements and check if this state creating is true. If it is, then I will uh, render this backdrop. So and backdrop and the same for the modal. Here I can check if this state creating is true. And if it is with the shortcut and the ampersand sign, so the Boolean and connector, um, I can render both the backdrop and the modal. I uh, got an error down there. Uh, yeah, obviously I should assign my click listener. So this should point at start create event handler. So with that, we can save this. And if I now click create event, we open this, which is awesome. Now I want to close it when I click cancel or confirm. And for this in the modal, I need to add some event listeners to my buttons. So when I click the cancel button, I want to trigger a method or a function which is received on a prop and the prop will be named on cancel, but you could name it whatever you want. And use, this uses the classic way of executing functions across components in React where we receive a handle to the function, a reference to a function in a component through props. And then we can call a function that lives in another component in yet another component because of that connection through props. And that's what I establish here. I'll add my own two props on cancel and on confirm and I can pass in function references on these properties. So now in the events.js file here on my modal, I can simply add on cancel here and on confirm and execute some methods in this events page. And there I'll have my modal confirm handler. And my modal cancel handler method in that class. Now in the modal cancel handler, I'll call set state and set creating to false. And for now, that's also the only thing I'll do here, though later in the modal confirm handler, I want to basically gather all the uh, values I entered for a new event and output these. So now let's uh, bind this here to the modal cancel handler. And then this on confirm prop will receive the modal confirm handler. And now with that set up, we can go back and we can now open that modal and cl close it through cancel and confirm. Now that's all amazing, but obviously we still can't enter anything. So in the next video, we'll now finally get started with that and make sure that we can create a new event.